Hey y'all, Jackie here, and today we're going to be making some 18th century pockets with some 20th century pizzazz. This is the beginning of my Glam Rock Goes Rococo project, in which I take a 1973 Ziggy Stardust and plop him down into 1773 Versailles. Now there is nothing wrong with plain underpinnings. It's underwear. Nobody's going to see that you use that old linen you found in a bargain bin for your pockets or that weird mustard colored cotton you found at the bottom of your stash. But I am not that kind of person. I mean, why go through all that trouble to hand make something if it's going to be boring? Why have plain underpinnings when you can make them glam rock? There are a million 18th century pocket videos out there, but I had so much fun with this project and really wanted to share my process with you. In this video, I will walk you through the steps to hand embroider and then make a pair of 18th century pockets. And stay tuned till the end because I'm going to attempt to figure out exactly how much I can fit in these honkers. That may or may not involve an attempt to get an entire bottle of whiskey in one of them. In any case, before I can make my Kansai Yamamoto inspired confection, I need to make all of my underpinnings. And like I said, if I'm going to go through all of that trouble to hand make something, I want to make it fun. So you can expect the next few videos will be full of me adding glitter and other nonsense to otherwise mundane 18th century underwear. I decided to start with the pockets. I've recently picked up embroidery as a skill and thought it would be a good excuse to practice it. I found an embroidery pattern for the iconic cover of David Bowie's album, Aladdin Sane on Etsy. I've linked that to that shop down below if you'd like to pick it up for yourself. It was very reasonably priced. With Bowie's face under my belt, I mean, with that idea in place, <laughs> I downloaded Burnley and Trowbridge's free digital pocket pattern, which I've linked below. I thought it'd be smart to just draw my design on the back of the pattern to save paper, but I regretted that decision. It made it difficult for me to transfer the pattern later since both my design and the pattern were showing through when I taped it up to the window. My advice is you do it on clean paper. I looked at several extant embroidered 18th century pockets for inspiration for the rest of my design. Once I finalized the design I liked, I taped my pattern up to my window and set about tracing it onto my linen embroidery blank. I will not be linking to these blanks. I got them at Michael's and because I'm cheap and wanted to use a coupon, I bought one thinking I could come back later with another coupon, only to find out that they either stopped carrying them all completely or the supplier is struggling because of everything that's going on. I ended up finding one at the Michael's in Florida where my folks live. I bought it there. My mom picked it up from the store and then brought it to me when she came to visit for Thanksgiving, which was awesome. Thanks mom. In any case, it's a 100% linen embroidery blank. If I were to do this again though, I would just use plain linen fabric like I did for the lining. You'll, you'll see that later. I taped it up to the window and used a water soluble marker to trace it onto my embroidery base. Then I set about on the hardest and most complicated bit of this project, the embroidery. Okay, here is the finished first pocket. I'm pretty happy with it. It took me way longer than I thought it would, but uh, it looks pretty good, I think. I debated shading in the David Bowie. Um, I really like the shading. I don't know if you can see it here. I think that looks really good. But then I kind of decided, you know, it looks good like this, and it, it kind of... I don't know. I like it. I like it. It's not worth the time to go back and redo it. So one thing to note, I used water-soluble ink to draw out my design, which is my, my uh, marking of preference on light colored fabric because it goes away. So my brain was like, okay, well, I want to get rid of the marking before I start putting to this together, but uh, then I won't know where everything is. So I started to draw with a heat sensitive pen and then I was thinking, well, I'm going to have to iron it too. So what I'm going to do really quick is do a basting stitch down the slit. I'm not quite ready to cut it yet. Okay. So I am going to cut out the actual pocket, but then I am going to hand base this, just make a thread marker before I wet it and then let it dry and then iron it.
Next, I needed to cut lining for the embroidery portion to protect my work from wear and tear. I cut out two pieces of plain white linen. Notice I'm adding just a slight extra seam allowance. This is because my serger makes a 3 8 inch seam and I don't know how to change that. If someone knows how, please let me know in the comments. Then I took the washed and ironed embroidery pieces, pinned them to the lining and basted them. Then it was a fast trip through the serger. This fabric frays like a teacher during midterms. I drew out a design for the inside pockets. I prioritized a pocket large enough for my phone and a spot to put my keys, then drew something to utilize the rest of the space. I don't want super huge sub pockets because then my pockets will be too heavy. I cut out the back parts of the pockets using cotton quilting fabric I found in my stash. My mom and I had a debate about its color. She thinks it's purple, I think it's pink. Either way, I don't love it, but yay for stash busting. Fun fact. I hate math. That may come as a surprise to those of you who have seen me do all of that drafting, but it's the truth. So my initial drawing of these pockets was eyeballed. It was only when I needed to transfer the pattern that I bothered to do the measuring at all. Once all the pockets were cut out, I surged all of the edges. I want these pockets to be sturdy. I'm hard on my stuff and I was not going to take the chance that these things would fray and fall apart. As I ironed each piece out, I tucked under what would be the top edge. That way I knew which way was up. For the key holder, I sewed it on the machine with right sides together. Then I used a rouleau turner to flip it right side out. This thing is kind of finicky, but it's really good for super skinny tubes like this one. Once it was flipped, I ironed it and went ahead and slipped it through my clasp to sew onto the pocket later. I'm preparing all of my little bits because I'm about to go on a trip. I then used the remainder of the fabric to cut out strips for the binding. I tried using a rotary cutter, but as a lefty I was having a heck of a time. So I ended up doing the old snip and rip a -roo, which was only 75% successful. Each of these strips is about an inch and a half wide. Ish. And now, a location change. Then it was time to snip the opening. I would like to say that the owner of this iron and ironing board was very embarrassed when they found out I was using it to film. Please do not judge them. They do not iron very often and have no need to purchase a new board. I pinned everything together to make sure what I wanted to be accessible was accessible. Once everything was checked, I ironed in all the seam allowances and then pinned it on for real. My math was a little off and the pockets on the foam side only just fit inside the seam allowance. Whoops. Predictably, once I was finished sewing on the pockets with the machine, I ironed it nice and neat. Then it was time to bind the opening. Apart from the actual embroidery, this is the hardest bit because you've got that sharp turn at the bottom. Since I'm opting to do this the historically adequate way and using binding cut on the straight grain instead of the bias, I have very little stretch. Is the binding going to look perfect? No. Is that okay? Absolutely. As you can see, I've already turned in one side of the binding by a quarter of an inch. I am now taking the raw edge and pinning it to the raw cut edge of the pocket opening. Pin it all the way around. You will have to fiddle with that turn, but don't stress out too much about it. And then stitch the binding down by hand. I used a back stitch. I probably could have used a running back stitch instead to save time, but again, I want this to be nice and sturdy. For some reason, after I pinned this, I decided to take it off and flip it over and sew the back side first. I should not have done that. Once it was sewn, I flipped the binding to the other side, ironed it inward, and then I turned it around and ironed it on the other side. From there, I whip stitched the binding to the front of the pocket. Then I pinned the front to the back and sewed it together. I used the back stitch once more. I've gone ahead and back stitched the back of the pocket to the front of the pocket. 
Now, typically they wouldn't have done this. Um, instead, they would have just maybe hand basted it together and then put everything together with the binding as I did with the binding for the pocket hole. Uh, nobody has time to sit there and do an extra seam, right? However, this pocket is going to get a lot of use, a lot of wear and tear, and I wanted to make sure that it was going to stay secure and be nice and stable. So I went ahead and did it. I had the extra time. Didn't really take me that long. Um, and now all I have to do is bind the top just like I bound the opening of the pocket hole. Sewing the binding on the outside is the same as the binding on the opening. I backstitched the first seam down. Again, doing this on the incorrect side. Make sure you do this on the front first. Then I was back home. I flipped the binding over to the front and whip stitched it down. Mind those corners, they're a little tricky. Once they were stitched, I gave the binding a good iron to smooth out any wrinkles. Everything is now bound. I will say that I regret doing the back first. If I were to do this again, I would sew the front of the binding first and then the back. As you can see, it is much nicer on the back than it is the front. You can really see my stitching lines here. If I were to do these again, I'm sure I will make another pair of pockets at some point in my life. I would sew the binding on the front and then flip it over and sew it on the back instead of the other way around. Um, I know I had a reason I did it that way, but I can't remember what it was at this point. So now all that is left to do is sew on the waist tape. I have a nice big roll of one inch twill tape here. And you can, if you want, put this on a single length of twill tape. Um, just, you know, tie a string around your waist to figure out how long you want it. And then um, put a pin on each side of your hips where you want each pocket to go. And then you just sew each to the single tape. However, I have a ton of tape and I like the idea of being able to wear one pocket or two pockets, especially because I have so much hardware in here. I have these things for my keys and stuff. If I put this on one tape, I have concern that it's going to be so heavy that it's going to get droopy. This way I can disperse the weight of the pockets separately on two things of tape. So I'm going to actually cut two lengths and have two separate pockets instead of two pockets on one length of tape. I'm gonna go ahead and get this cut and then I'm going to take the tape and sew on the front first. I'm gonna sew, you know, bind it off with the tape like this so that the pocket is closed and then we'll be done. I marked the center of each tape with a pin and matched that to the center of the pocket. I pinned it with a quarter inch seam allowance. Then I backstitched the front, flipped it over, and backstitched the back, making sure not to catch the front of the pocket in my seam.
And there you have it, two glam rock inspired 18th century pockets. I freaking love these things. While I made a few rookie mistakes, I'm so proud of the way that these came out. While this project did not take long to assemble, the embroidery portion did take a while. There's a lot of work behind that design, but I don't regret it because these are so fun and so very me. The inside pockets are going to make these things super functional and hopefully they will last me a long time. Coming up next in my Glam Rock Goes Rococo project, you'll see the Starman under petticoat, a set of mullet stays, and a glittery steel pannier, which I have yet to come up with a clever name for. So if anyone has any Bowie related ideas for that, please leave me a comment down below and let me know. Thanks so much for watching. This was a fun little project and I am looking forward to completing the whole outfit. Remember to subscribe if you haven't and give the video a good old thumbs up if you liked it. It really helps my content get seen. Thanks y'all and see you next time. Well, I made some, mo uh, I'm not gonna lie, I've been listening to Almost Famous soundtrack all day in preparation for this. I forgot how good that is. Hold me closer, tiny dancer. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, I guess I shouldn't do that. What's going on, huh? Pockets, 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 pockets.